Hi, my name is Daniel and I'm a nutritional therapist. And today I want to discuss some tips for insulin resistance. So basically insulin resistance is when your muscle, liver, or fat cells aren't as responsive to insulin, which means they're going to have a harder time taking up circulating glucose into your cells to use for energy. And this results in your pancreas creating more insulin to help your cells take up the glucose. And over time, we can see chronically elevated blood glucose, which could eventually lead to diseases like type 2 diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. In terms of diet, evidence suggests that a diet lower in carbohydrates could be beneficial for those suffering with insulin resistance. This meta-analysis here found that subjects on a ketogenic diet saw reductions in their blood glucose, glycated hemoglobin, improvements to their triglycerides, total cholesterol, LDL, and HDL, as well as reductions in their body weight and waist circumference. The 1% reduction in HbA1c, which is a long-term measure of blood sugar, is comparable to the therapeutic effects of medication. You can also consider time-restricted feeding to improve insulin sensitivity, which is a form of intermittent fasting. Evidence suggests that time-restricted feeding can be beneficial for supporting weight loss, insulin levels, lipid profiles, as well as inflammation. This 14-week trial assigned subjects with type 2 diabetes to 10 hours of time-restricted feeding from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. or a control group. After 12 weeks of the intervention, the group assigned to time-restricted feeding saw greater reductions in HbA1c, fasting plasma glucose, body weight, BMI, and insulin resistance. A lot of the benefits seen in this study can be attributed to a reduction in calories in the time-restricted feeding group. And I think that's one of the key benefits of time-restricted feeding is that it helps to reduce appetite, which leads to weight loss and an improvement in metabolic markers. Another thing to consider is the importance of sleep. Take a look at this study that found that as little as a single night of sleep restriction resulted in an increased insulin resistance. And the results are consistent with this randomized control trial here that found that one week of five hour at night sleep restriction led to a 20% decrease in insulin sensitivity. It's also important to consider some key nutrients that are needed to maintain insulin sensitivity. And if we're not getting enough of them through our diet, we could start to see some issues with insulin function. For starters, we have vitamin K, which plays a role in maintaining insulin sensitivity. And this is due to its ability to convert uncarboxylated osteocalcin into carboxylate osteocalcin. Evidence suggests that osteocalcin is involved in glucose metabolism by improving beta cell function and insulin sensitivity. And higher levels of carboxylated osteocalcin is associated with reduced risk of insulin resistance. And this study here found that four weeks of vitamin K2 supplementation led to increased carboxylated osteocalcin as well as increased insulin sensitivity. It's also worth making sure you have optimal vitamin D levels due to vitamin D's involvement in insulin secretion and signaling. And from this study, we can see that rectifying a vitamin D deficiency in insulin resistant women led to improvements in insulin sensitivity, insulin resistance, and fasting insulin levels. And the study found that vitamin D levels of at least 80 nanomoles per liter was needed to see the most improvement. Magnesium deficiency may also contribute towards insulin resistance due to its involvement in insulin secretion, insulin sensitivity, and the regulation of inflammation. When we look at this study, we can see that higher dietary magnesium intake is associated with lower levels of insulin and lower rates of insulin resistance. What's interesting is the authors were able to identify a dose-dependent relationship between magnesium intake and insulin resistance. And this was independent of age, total caloric intake, physical activity, medication, menopause, and adiposity. And the capacity for magnesium supplementation to improve insulin sensitivity was demonstrated in this double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial when subjects with insulin resistance and low serum magnesium levels were given a magnesium supplement. They saw improvements in insulin resistance while the control group did not. Finally, I also want to mention that exercise is also a really good way to improve insulin sensitivity. First, we've got this study here that assessed the impact of resistance training on insulin sensitivity in adolescents. And what they found was that after 16 weeks, the group undergoing resistance training demonstrated a statistically significant increase in insulin sensitivity compared to the non-exercise control group. And that improvement in insulin sensitivity was independent of any changes in body composition. Okay, just to recap, if you're looking to improve insulin sensitivity, then to start, you wanna look at your diet. And a diet lower in carbohydrates may be a good option for you. If not, you can look into a Mediterranean style diet as well, which has demonstrated some benefit in improving blood glucose and insulin levels. You can also incorporate time-restricted feeding. Um, you want to make sure that you're getting enough sleep, look at any possible nutrient deficiencies, and there may be a need for supplementation. 
um, particularly vitamin K, vitamin D, um, and magnesium. And finally, you want to add in an exercise routine. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button, subscribe, share it. If you have any questions or would like me to cover any specific topics, drop a comment below and I'll see you next time.